Hey guys, I'm Patrick. I'm the lead editor and producer at LumaForge. And today we're going to be talking about creating dailies for 8K media. 8K media. So currently I'm working on a feature film and we're shooting with 8K footage off of the red helium camera. Now this means that we've got a lot of data to deal with and 8K does not exactly play back smoothly on every single computer that we're working with. So something Red has done in their infinite wisdom is give their camera the ability to record 2K proxies alongside of the full 8K R3D files. Something that's pretty awesome about this workflow is that we have the ability to choose whether or not we want to use the same color science as our Red files and whether or not we want to normalize the footage to some sort of Rec. 709 LUT or something along those lines. So what we've chosen to do on this particular film for the sake of creating dailies is to bake in no look other than the base gamma and color science of the RED camera and then apply our own LUT within Final Cut Pro 10 before exporting things to Frame.io, which is the tool that we're using for the review of dailies. So what this looks like if we were to break it down is that we import all of our footage using an application called Hedge. Hedge gives us the ability to copy from multiple sources to multiple destinations at the same time. So we can copy three or four RED camera cards at the same time along with our sound card to our Jellyfish, which is our collaborative storage on set, along with an OWC Thunder Bay as our backup and a GTEC drive that we're using solely for those proxy files so we can have someone work offsite during the week prepping and organizing our footage. Once we've ingested all of this footage, we use an application called Kino to pull the proxies out of the RED cards into a separate proxies folder so we don't accidentally import both the RED files and the ProRes proxies from the camera. Sometimes those ProRes proxies recorded by the camera will get divided into multiple spanned clips, especially if your camera operators are using FAT32 formatting. This means that we have a limitation on file size, so as soon as that file hits four gigabytes, it's going to split into yet another clip. Kino also gives us the ability to combine these spanned clips, so all I have to do is select the multiple clips that make up this one take, right click, and select combine, and it will be rewrapped into a single file that I can then bring into my proxies folder before importing into Final Cut Pro 10. Once that's completed, I'll go into Final Cut Pro 10, import all of my proxies, apply our LUT, import our audio, and then use the application Sync and Link X to batch sync all of our video to our audio based on time code. Now in the last video, I talked about the UltraSync 1, which is a device we use to make sure that our cameras and our audio have the same time code at all times. This means that Sync and Link can immediately synchronize all of our dailies without any sort of drift or any sort of issue that changes over time. If I happen to have one or two frames off between the camera and the audio source, all I have to do is tell Sync and Link X the number of frames to offset, and then it applies that change to the entire day, all at once. Once everything has been synchronized inside of Final Cut Pro 10, my assistant editor will go through and they will trim the top and tail of each clip so that we don't have our clapperboard and we don't have the action after cut. If you're working in a corporate video environment or working with talking heads, you might remove things like resets or questions or that sort of a thing that are happening during the interview process. Then once we have everything nice and trimmed and clean, we will select all of our synchronized clips inside of Final Cut Pro 10 and then batch export those clips to a watch folder for Frame.io. Now with Frame.io, the desktop app will allow you to set a specific folder as a watch folder on your computer that then will upload to a specific folder within Frame.io. This means that if I'm working with day one, two, three, four, and five as watch folders, those folders on my computer will then upload to those corresponding folders in Frame.io. This has been a great way for us to divide each day's worth of dailies and give our director the opportunity to review the previous day's footage while he's on set. Now the difference between doing this and reviewing footage directly off the camera card is one, we can free up the camera card to be reused, and two, they now have the ability to listen to the full clean audio from our sound recordist as well as looking at the footage from the camera. Because oftentimes your Frame.io account will have limited data, it's highly recommended that you don't export your dailies at full resolution. Final Cut Pro 10 allows you to export master files in batch at lower resolutions, or you can create your own compressor presets in Compressor and set those as share destinations inside of Final Cut Pro 10 for your batch exports of your footage. We actually went into Compressor and created our very own preset 
that was single pass as opposed to multi-pass made it much faster to export and was at the proper resolution so that we retained our aspect ratio and made files that were small enough to go onto Frame.io as quickly as possible on whatever internet we were on. This process has made it significantly easier for our director and our DP to see what they've actually captured before capturing the next scene, and it has given us the opportunity to see where we're missing footage or where we need additional coverage before continuing to shoot. If you're working in a corporate environment, this is gonna be extremely helpful for realizing what B-roll you might be missing or realizing what other interviews you need to pick up before you finish your shoot and go into post-production. Dailies is an age-old practice. Previously, it was used for film. It's been used digitally within the last 20 years. Typically, post houses have been required to create dailies, but now we're in an age where you can create your own dailies on set. You can be your very own post lab and you don't have to hire somebody out to give you access to this tool that is extremely helpful in the creative process. If you have any questions about how to create dailies, leave those in the comments below and thanks so much for watching.